there, I'm Victoria Live and Good, AKA the Dixie Diva. And I'm here in Seattle singing the villainous mother-in-law role of Cabanija in Seattle Opera's Katia Cabanova production. Actually, I was first here almost 30 years ago in 1989 singing the role of Charlotte in Werther. So from the ingenue mezzo to the dramatic character mezzo, 30 years with Seattle Opera, something to celebrate. Also Cabanica is a new role for me, it's a role debut if you will, and it marks my hundredth operatic role. So there was a lot going on to celebrate last Saturday when we opened at McCall Hall. So anyway, as I said, I'm known as the Dixie Diva and the question I get asked the most often over the past 33 years of my career is how does a little girl go from a cow farm in Thomasville, North Carolina to being the Dixie Diva and to singing on the world's great opera stages. So I like to say that it's La Forza del Destino, it's the force of destiny because growing up I had a very musical family but my parents were barber shoppers. That does not mean they cut hair. That means that my dad was the bass in a barber shop quartet, my mom was the lead in a Sweet Adeline quartet so when my little brother was born, literally, daddy sang bass, mama sang tenor, me and little brother joined right in there. So we became known as the Live and Good Family Quartet. We traveled around singing in churches and revivals, and so it was barbershop music, gospel music, country and western music, and the only opera I ever heard was maybe on one of Gilligan's Island episodes and Bugs Bunny. That's it, no Saturday afternoon met broadcast, nothing. So it came time to go to college and my parents said, what do you think you want to go into? And I said, well, let's talk about what I'm good at. And, and we all decided, you know, I'm very dramatic and I love to play dress up and I have a gift for gab and I'm just over the top in everything I do. So did we think opera singing? No, we thought I'll be a lawyer. So I went down to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and I went in pre-law and I went in to the advisor the first week. Parents dropped me off. There I am, Ellie Mae Clampett on the campus. I go in and the guy says, well your curriculum looks good but you need one more credit. So let's look at the one hour options and I'm looking down the list and I see like tennis. And I'm like, no, I, ooh, I don't want to sweat. And so I then see the choir. So I said, at that time I talked like a real hick. Now I just talk like a southern belle, but I was a hick then. And I said, oh, the Carolina choir. Oh, I can sing real good. I need to audition for that choir, mister. So he sent me over to Person Hall, where a man named Robert Porco was auditioning singers for the Carolina choir. And I walked in that building and all I heard was a bunch of foreign language. Obviously German, French, Italian, Latin. I just thought I had stepped into some foreign place. I was like, what am I doing here? So when it came time to go in there and sing, he said, what did you bring today? And I said, what did I bring? I don't have anything. He said, well, what can you sing from memory? And I thought and thought and I said, oh, I can sing the theme from The Sound of Music. So I sang The Hills Are Alive from The Sound of Music. Little tiny angelic voice from the church choir. So this man said, I'm going to vocalize you. And I'm like, what's that? So he started vocalizing me and discovered I had this lower voice. Took me across the lawn to the next building, which was Hill Hall. The voice faculty sitting there like the faculty or the guys on The Voice or American Idol. There they were, it lined up, looking stern, and I sing The Hills Are Alive again. So within 30 minutes of my first day at Chapel Hill, they offered me a scholarship to be a vocal performance major. So I ran back to the dorm, picked up the phone, called mom and dad. They were having their 5.30 supper. And I said, Daddy, it's Vicki Ann. I ain't gonna be no lawyer. I'm gonna be a singer. And the phone went thud. So anyway, that meant that I had to go in and have a voice lesson, which I had never had. I'd had piano lessons. I was a cheerleader of course, which, is, which I think helped my chest voice immensely, but I'd never had a voice lesson. So I went in to have a lesson with Miss Joyce Peck, bigger than life woman with a huge voice and a huge laugh, 
And the first thing this voice teacher said to me was, all right, Vicki, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you where your diaphragm is. And I said, ma'am, I ain't got one of them, I'm a virgin. And she then started laughing hysterically and she said, well, you do have one and I'm gonna show you how to use it. So when she taught me how to breathe diaphragmatically with my intercostal muscles, out came a dramatic mezzo-soprano. And she took me to Charlotte to see my first opera, which was La Boheme. And I was like Sharon Moonstruck or Julia Robertson, Pretty Woman. I sat there watching La Boheme, weeping, realizing that all those gifts I knew I had, being overdramatic, playing dress up, gift of gab, all the glam and flamboyance that I loved was all also going into opera. And it was like a lightning bolt from heaven. I said, this is what I'm meant to do. And the rest is history.